Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video, welcome to my garage. I'm in the middle of painting Ratchet's chassis and with that I'm painting all of the suspension components so everything is torn apart. And I'm reaching the point where everything's painted and I'm getting close to reassembly. I figured now was a really good time to show you guys how I initially set up the springs on my shock absorbers. This is a locked off-road 12 inch travel, two and a half inch body reservoir shock absorber. On my setup here, and everybody's gonna be a little bit different here, my top spring is a 150 pound spring. The bottom spring is a 200 pound spring. The rear shock absorbers are 16 inch travel. These are also locked off road. These are two and a half inch body. Now these, I'm actually just using as coil carriers. They did have the remote reservoirs. You can see I pulled that out and I just threw a plug in here. And I also, on the, the valving inside, I took some of the discs out. So I'm not using these as shock absorbers as, at all. I just use them as coil carriers. My top spring is a 16 inch spring and it's 300 pound. The bottom spring is also a 16 inch spring and it's 350 pound. Now let's go over to my workbench, which right now is shoved in the corner here. And I've got my other front shock absorber in here. I've got it in the vise, flipped upside down. What I have here is I've got aluminum jaw inserts in here, and then I also put a rag on there to try to keep the scratching to a minimum. But I've got this pinched down in here. This is my favorite way, or for me, the easiest way to work on shock absorbers is in the vise with them upside down. I guess first and foremost, I'm gonna show you everything I know here. I know a decent amount about doing this, but I'm not a professional, so take it with a grain of salt. But regardless, I'm gonna show you how I set up Mahler and how I set up Ratchet. I've already told you the lengths of the shock absorbers and my springs. First thing I need to do here is just take everything apart. So the first thing, First thing I'm gonna do is bleed off nitrogen. All right, that should be pretty much completely bled off now. Uh, the first thing I need to do is loosen this collar all the way down so that my springs are nice and loose. All right, now, I take off my bottom spring. This one is the 200. My slider. And I like to label everything. So this is upside down right now. So just to make reassembly really easy for me, I like to write top on my slider because these have they have a short side and a long side and you want the long side facing down so that if this happens to be coming past the body of your shock, it holds on to it. So I just wrote top on the slider, set that off to the side and then take off my top spring, which is my smaller one and it is the 150. The springs that you have should have their model number on the side of the spring. These are I-box springs. This is a 1200, 300, 150, which means 1200 means it's a 12 inch. 300 means it's, it's three inches in the middle and this is a two and a half inch body shock, so that makes sense. And then 150 is just the 150 pound. Okay, so I've got my spring here. No, I don't. So I've got my shock absorber here and I have my slider. And what I want to do is I want to set up this slider. These sliders have a set of rings here and you can lock these in place so that the slider will stop. So in a normal situation, you've got these two springs, which are different. One's a 150, one's a 200. And when you have them together, they're going to kind of I'm not going to say neutralize each other, but they're going to average each other out. And 
What some people like to do is on the bottom spring, they like to run it really thick. Like if I've got my 150 on the top, some people will run like a 250 or a 275 or a 300 on the bottom so that as they're compressing, they'll hit that bottom spring and it will really slow things down. If you didn't have this slider set up with the stops, pretty much that 350 would just completely crush that 150 before it would really do much work. So it would have to crush that 150 and then if it reached the point where it completely crushed the 150, then your 350 would start doing its work. So what you have to do is you have to set this slider so that it stops before it crushes the 150. Now, I don't, like, I don't like to run my springs that far apart. I actually like them really close. Like I said, this is a 150, this is a 200. So they're kind of close. But even with that, I do want the 200. I, I want the full effect of the 200 since I have it. So in order to do that, you need to set up your slider. So what you need to do is, wherever you bought your springs from, or you can just go to Eibach, their website, uh, and look up your springs. So like, this is the, the 12 inch, 200 pound, and they'll have what they call, let me get out my handy dandy notebook here, because I wrote, I looked these up and I wrote them down. So my 12 inch, 200, which is the one that's gonna be on the bottom. The free length is 12 inches, obviously. The coil bind, that's the crush. That means this is how far down you can push that spring before it just crushes itself because it just bottoms out. The coil bind is 3.66 inches. So that means this can be compressed 3.66 inches and then at that point all the coils will be touching themselves like a pervert. So 3.66 inches, I'm gonna average that to four. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra room, which means I'm gonna set this to a position that is four inches from bottoming out. And while I say that, the first thing I need to do is I wanna get my uh, full compression going on my shock. So I'm gonna push this in. As I push it in, I'll probably need to bleed nitrogen out again because as I as I push this shaft in it's taking up volume in the shock body it's not pushing out but either way I'm gonna I'm gonna burp out the nitrogen if you notice now there will be some pressure that's because I pushed that shaft in and now it takes up space so I'm gonna make sure this is all the way down and then like I said this is my bottom spring. This is the 200. Its crush is 3.66. I'm going with four inches. That means I want this slider to be four inches from here to there. So if I measure here, that's four inches. Then if I take this adjusting ring, run it up there that is right there is four inches then I'm going to take the locking ring up against it I'm still at four inches and my piston is still bottomed out so now I can take my spanners Yeah, well, first I gotta make sure I turn them in the right direction. I do that all the time. You'd think at this point I understood the concept of righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Okay, now those are nice and tight. So then that locks my slider here at four inches. I'm locked in so that at full compression, if I'm coming off a of big jump or for whatever reason, this shock absorber has been completely compressed. If it comes in all the way, it's gonna stop at four inches 
and it's not going to bind on that spring, which means it's not going to bind on this shock absorber. I want my suspension to bottom out on my bump stops. I want that to take the force of the bottom outs, not my shock absorbers. My system is not designed, nor are these shock absorbers designed to take that kind of an impact. They're there to absorb, not take the shock of a bottom out. So this will protect those. So what I want to do at this point is I want to mark that. So I'm going to put a little mark. This is the front of my shock absorbers. That's why I came around to the front here. I'm going to put a little mark across these and I'm going to put a little mark on the shock body itself. If I'm at the track making adjustments, I want to be able to visually look at this and be sure that it hasn't moved because if this moves and pushes itself this way, then I could bottom out and I don't want that. So that mark there, I can just look at that and if I see that the line is there and that the dabs on the body are there, I know that hasn't moved and I know that's good to go. Now, there's another thing I, I want to make a mark on here. At full compression here, uh, my bottom spring would be almost crushed. The top spring is still at the mercy of this adjuster right here. And this, like I'm not going to be adjusting this in the field. Some guys will get a little bit more particular with that. I don't. Once this is set at my crush, I leave it for two reasons. Number one, I just want, don't want to spend the time trying to adjust that bottom coil. Like I said, I run mine pretty close to each other, so I'm not going to see big gains by trying to trim the bottom coil. Number two, uh, this is a pain in the ass to get to. It's really hard. You either have to take it apart like I have it here, or you have to do it through the coils, which is really difficult. So now that I have this set up, I'm probably not going to adjust that unless I actually change the bottom spring. But if I'm at the track, this I might adjust. So this is still a moving target. Now, a rule of thumb that I've been told, and I, I pretty much try to stick to, is that if you've adjusted this more than three inches off the bottom, your springs are probably a little bit too soft. So if I abided by that rule, I wouldn't ever have any problems. But regardless, because I like visual things, I'm going to put myself an identifier on the shock body here, which is going to tell me that absolutely no matter what, I cannot put this adjuster past that point so that I don't bind my top spring. And my top spring, if I pull up my notes here, the top spring is the 150 and its coil bind is 3.19, which is basically three and a quarter. And again, I'm going to play it safe and I'm just going to go with four. That gives me three quarters of an inch to play with. So. If this shock absorber was fully compressed and I had this set up to stop right here, then if I went four inches from there, that would put me just a general mark right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this line all the way around the shock. Okay, now that's just a visual line for me and honestly, like I don't think I would ever have it adjusted that far, but you never know. Uh, so for me, I'm, I'm just the kind of guy that really likes clear markers and identifiers. So if I'm out at the track, and I see that line, as long as I know that these haven't slipped, that if I don't go beyond that, I'm not going to be binding any of the coils. And I like that. So I'll put that line on there. And with this line and those lines, if you change the coils, you just take some acetone, wipe those off. It's no big deal. Okay, so now what I'm going to do 
is I want to extend this because I'm done marking these things and I want to put the shock back together. Since I let the nitrogen out of here, I don't like to pull the shaft out of here without nitrogen pressurizing it because when you do that, you create a, a suction or a vacuum in the shock body and then it has to pull that piston back and there's a good chance at that point you might pull some air past your piston and get it in with the fluid. So what I'm going to do, and since this is just set up, I'm going to actually just put compressed air in here. When I go to the track and when ratchet's fully built, I'll bleed that out and I'll blow it up with nitrogen. But when I'm just doing stuff in the shop, I just use compressed air. I've got my compressor set up with 75 pounds of compressed air. So I'm just going to tap onto there put in 75 pounds and that's just going to push the shaft right out of there and then I feel pretty good that I'm not pulling any air past that piston. I had to pump up my air compressor a little bit. Hopefully when I open this valve, there we go. Now the air pressure is pushing the piston in here down, which is pushing the fluid out. Okay, now the shock's up all the way, I can reassemble. I've got my 150, which is the lighter spring. Take off my slider, put on the 150, put my slider in with the top facing down, because this is upside down, and then put in my 200, and then my bottom collar. And then I can turn this in. Now this collar on the bottom here is, remember, my moving target, but I've driven Ratchet enough and I've had him at the track a couple of times now. I at least know with this spring setup, I want 60 millimeters, a 60 millimeter gap on the bottom here. I've as I've been playing with it, I've been everywhere from 45 to 65 millimeters. Right now I'm happiest with 65. So I'm gonna set this to 65 so that I'm right, or 60, so that I'm right back to where I was the last time I was at the track. So I've just got a little ruler here. And for me, I just measure to the threads and right now I'm at 38. So I'm just going to crank this up until I'm at 60. Okay, now this is set at 60. I'm not going to lock it down because once I actually bolt this into the chassis, I'm going to rotate this so that the, uh, the nut where you cinch this in is easily accessible in the chassis. So I'll do that once it's in place. But that is it for setting this up for the initial spring setup. So there you have it, that's how I set up my shock absorbers for the springs. That is not shock tuning. I'll have a separate video where I do that. I'll probably be doing that out at the track. This is just your initial shock absorber setup to your springs. I tried to make this a shorter video, but with all the chit chat I did, it's probably not gonna be that short of a video, but regardless, Guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope these are helping you with whatever you're working on, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.